What's up, y'all? We've got some cute kitty cats, girls making lots of noise, and some virtual babes breaking nets. That's right. We have the K-pop hot off for October 2024. And this month, we're joined by Vanessa Jefferson, a multi-talented powerhouse. She's a songwriter, a tarot card reader, and a relative of one of today's biggest pop stars. And she's read for K-pop idols like Woosung from The Rose, Sorn, Alexa, and more. So in addition to giving us her honest opinions on today's songs, Vanessa will also be giving a reading, too. I'm so excited. Hello. Welcome, Vanessa. Hi, everybody. How's it going? We're so Good. excited to have you on. So first, Good. tell us. Good. Tell us about your experience as a K-pop fan. Oh, wow. K-pop, it's, it's really changed my life. I'll tell you what. Like, ever since I first heard IU and 21 and girls like Red Velvet, um, it, it really just opened my mind up to what music could even be. Um, as uh, I think at the time when I first heard them, there weren't many girls out there. I think it was just One Direction. And I was like, what is this? Like, rest in peace, but what is this? <laughs> so I said, listen, K-pop, it just came out of nowhere and it snatched my wig and I've never been the same. Not the wig. <laughs> From the root. <laughs> And so you actually have now kind of worked professionally in K-pop as well. So how has that whole experience been for you? Oh, my gosh. It was the most, like, serendipitous situation I've ever been in. Like, uh, during the pandemic, I randomly went to Korea and I said, listen, if I've got to be quarantined somewhere for God knows who, I might as well go to Korea and do it. So I hopped on a plane and lived in Korea for like three weeks, I mean, three months rather. And um, I randomly walked into a vegan restaurant in Itaewon. And that's where I met Alexa Zany Bro's manager, where we got to talking. And she's like, what are you doing here? I said, I want to be a songwriter. And she said, well, there's this gal called Alexa. You want to write for her? I said, sure. So uh, she sends me some beats. I go into my hotel room and the first song I wrote was Obsession and it ended up on her EP. So that was my first cut out of like just random serendipity meeting people and just being myself out in the streets of Korea. Yes, being in the streets is beneficial. Y'all y'all heard that. Get out there. Go to go to those cafes. <laughs> Follow your heart, honestly. Yeah. I love that. And speaking of following, before we get any further, you should let us know, let our listeners know, where should people go to follow you everywhere? Well, you can follow me at Red Fairy DF. The D stands for discombobulated. The F stands for fairy because I'm a discombobulated fairy. And that's where uh, you can find me if you want a tarot reading or if you just want to watch me in my crazy K-pop life. I'm always at a K-pop concert or bopping around New York or Korea or Japan, traveling and just doing doing the most out of these streets. So if you want to follow some silliness or, you know, learn your life, uh, I'm here at Red Fairy DF on Instagram. That's where I reside. Yes. Love <laughs> yeah. that. You're great. Love that. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yes. So if you're new to CCTV and our pop-up episodes, every month we put up polls on our Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube community pages at CCTV Pops. And yeah. you get to vote for three of K-pop's biggest releases of the month to battle it out in our song, video, and performance rounds. And of course, <laughs> Patreon members get priority choice. So make sure to come join us at patreon.com slash CCTV Pops. We do have a free tier, so you should definitely come out Hang out with us and our producers, Emily, George, Lily, Louie, and Juliet. Yes, that's right. And we're almost at 3K. Listen, y'all, I'm going to keep saying it till we hit that number. Join mm. the CCTV crew. Come to the brunch, honey. Uh, that's what we call our little sessions here at CCTV. The brunch. Come to the brunch. Don't be left out. Okay? Or do. But then you're missing out on the fun. All the fun that we have here, especially here at Pop-Off. So Pop-Off is a fun, pure fun kind of vibe. All right? So don't take it too seriously. Join us and let us know what wins for you in these comments. Okay? Be nice. <laughs> yes. So this month, you voted for Kiss of Life, Get Loud, Say My Name, Waveway, and Espa's 
Whiplash. So, let's get ready to rumble. Round one. All right, first in the ring, we have player one, Kiss of Life with Get Loud. And this was done by Strawberry Banana Club, On Dime, Tanisha Jackson, Belle of Kiss of Life, and Kim Jin Ho. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so before we get into it, Vanessa, let's do a reading first. Hey, What's the hey. energy around this song and this group? All right, let's find out. Um, I looked up Kiss of Life, and I found out all the girls' um, zodiac signs. Mm -hmm. huh. So Julie, she's an Aries, okay? So that means she's fiery. She's going to give you performance. She's not going to care. Um, Natty is the Gemini of the group. So she's going to give us, oops, I don't know. Where am I? Oh, I'm cute. Um, then you've got Belle, the Pisces, the water, you know, real chill, but going to pop, 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 coming real good. And then uh, another Gemini, which is interesting. They've got two Geminis on the team, and that's Hanu, and she's the Magne. Uh, but let's see what the cards uh, say. Oh, all right. It looks like uh, Queen of Cups. So when Queen of Cups comes out, that means they're all on their queen card, as uh, Red Velvet would say. They're killing it. They're going in. Um, they're just really strong girls and have a lot of potential. Um, on another note, it is kind of they just started out, so it might be a little, like, hard, a little struggle for them. But they really just need to keep believing in themselves, and they'll they'll get it there. They'll get there. Kiss of life. If you want me to pull some more cards for them, I can. But I thought maybe two would be cute. Two is definitely cute. We've never had a reader on the show. We've had people read <laughs> some of the groups, <laughs> but never an actual read. You know. <laughs> so that yeah, maybe is we pull awesome. one more for each group at the end after we've chosen our winners. Agree. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. I love that. Let's do it. Yeah, but they're in a good spot. Look at this. This is the ten of. A pentacle so it's like happy family happy things as long as they keep following their dreams they'll be good you know speaking of following their dreams they are getting ready to go on tour i think it's called kiss road so come on mm. come on come on i'm actually really excited to hear your opinion on the song so we get their energy we get how they are as a group but what do you think of the sonics the production the, the vocals the lyrics confetti honey that's, uh, I love that line, that confetti, like, don't want to wake up now. Like, it's just, it's really cute. They've got really nice, like, punchy words to come on and, like, get your attention. And it's like that K-pop that we love, like that good old-fashioned K-pop. And that's why I like this song. Yeah, you know what? I feel like with this song, um, I got, like, Neptunes, especially with the Britney. Like, I know I may be young. I got feelings too. And then they're whispering in the beginning and their thesis statement is I'd want to be myself and I can be my muse. And I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. So going back to what you were saying about them having that queen energy, it makes sense. Um, I think that line is so good. And for them to kind of be so attitude driven with the song, Sexy Confident, like it's all about enticing the listener to get lost in a rhythm. There's nothing more confident in telling someone saying, I don't need you to like me. It's like, do I like you? Come, 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 honey. And this whole song is giving that. It's like, it's what I want. It's what I want to do. Like, everything about it is uh, 2000s pop princess dream. Like, if somebody released it, like, way back in the day, a girl group or even a solo artist from the UK or the US, I will say, though, my biggest gripe with the song is the chorus, only because the song has so much going on with the verses, like, the production in the verses and the pre-hook, like, with the vocal trills and all that other things like that worth carrying the song and then when you get to the chorus it's like almost too understated and i feel like if they would have went for like the hey where the party at the, 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 like something like that something you're talking about getting loud but there was no like hey or something like something brighter than like this cool girl thing you can't be cool telling people to get loud because then it's just like mm -hmm, get loud yeah and it's like <laughs> no go for it go for it girl um i think for me uh I wish that the bridge may have been sung instead of rapped because they've been doing this rappy-ish kind of bridge and they haven't had Hanu and Bell sing like they did in their debut. When they harmonized, when they debuted together, mm. it was like, ooh, yes, we haven't had harmonies in so long mm. in K-pop, especially in a bridge that <laughs> wasn't like hidden within the harmonies of the vocals, right? I wish, even though Nati and Julie are great there, 
it would have been nicer to kind of really lean into that whole pop R&B thing that you're already doing and let them have that moment where it's like vocals or have all four of them kind of contribute to it. Just to have it be like this little cute, sexy sing off and then a rap thing. I'm like, you already did that. Thanks. But I'm good. Um, on a positive note, I like the harmonies in the chorus. I just feel like it could have been a little bit bigger, a little bit more bold, a little mm -hmm. bit loud, more loud. Mm -hmm. Yes, I pretty much had the same thoughts as you. I love the whole 2000s thing that they're going for. I think it's a great lane to stay in. The beginning I also noted was giving Pharrell. I, I, I thought Justin Timberlake's Like I Love You. Yeah. The way it's like the staccato acoustic guitar strum. Yeah. Um, and then the way they do the percussion as well, it's very reminiscent of Pharrell and Timbaland in that kind of era. So very yeah. much a student of that time. Um, I agree. I think the chorus is maybe my least favorite part of the song. I think the verses are super strong. Their vocal execution is great. And the production is very lush. And I love how the pre-chorus gets a little ethereal as well before then it gets a little kind of heavier for the chorus. I think the whole kind of ride that they take you on is great. Mm -hmm. uh, but the chorus itself is not the most catchy. Like it just doesn't fully grab my attention. And yeah, I think if you're going to call the song Get Loud, I'm expecting something a little more explosive as well. Uh, I did read on Reddit, some people say it sounds like the Cheetah Girls. Uh, that sounds <laughs> like okay. Little Mix, yeah. which I get oh, that. Yeah, nah. I, I could see that. I think if Little Mix recorded this, though, it would not be a single. <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, well, that's you know, on the... real, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have been promoting Igloo as well as like a like a B-side promotion. Yes. And Igloo has been going off. But that understate, like, I'm so hot. These boys want me. It fits. So, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Really and yeah. I just, I want to get in there and say, like, uh, the chorus never caught me. And that's why I could never, I was like, where's it at? Where's, what's the catch? Like, where's it going to grab me, especially as a songwriter? Um, and the parts that, like, stood out, like that confetti, I was like, oh, okay. Like, give me, give me a cute little word here and there. But, like, <laughs> other than that, I was like, okay, y'all sound good. You look good. But where, how am I supposed to remember this song? <laughs> Oof. okay well moving on to player two and their names are say my name <laughs> with their song wave way and it was done by kyo hyun mai's im so he tari se young hey from jumba's che mei um and chelsea warner and sophia queen quinn so yeah this one is interesting because they're a newer group. So we have a rookie group in our midst. Yes. Y'all. And um, they're noted because yeah. Jay Jong, right, from TVXQ or JYJ, he's, it's his company. It's his first big launch. Right. Uh, so, yes, a brand new group. So let's start with that reading. Oh, man, brand new group. Um, let's see. So say my name. Say my name, not the Beyonce song with Destiny's Child, <laughs> which kept coming up when I looked them up. Okay, so Ten of Wands, first card to come out for them. And you see how this girl is walking down a long road? They've got a long, long road ahead of them. So they really just need to, like, hold on to their belongings and stay on this road <laughs> and be patient with themselves because they're so young. But the thing is, this is a good sign. The sun is shining down on them, giving them, like, hope. So it's kind of this beautiful juxtaposition against, like, how long of a road it's going to be for them and them to develop their careers. But they should know that the sun is always shining upon mm. them, which oh, is... Oh, that's great. Yeah. Really, okay. really sweet. Oh, especially in this industry where Whoa. it's tough to have longevity. So if there's some longevity, that's good. <laughs> that's it would be here. really. It sure is. And I looked up all of their um their star signs. And so going through these girls, because they're all new girls, we've got Hitomi. Um, she's a Libra, and this is the oldest. And like it's good to have the Libra around to keep things balanced. But um, this is a very Libra heavy group. So May. And Songju, all three of them are Libras, air signs. So we've got a lot of like thinking, thinking. Hopefully they don't think too much. Um, and then you've got Connie, who's a Capricorn, and that's great, an earth sign to hold these uh, air signs down. 
give them some earthy base so they don't like fly out into the atmosphere. Um, then you've also got Soha, who's a Leo. <laughs> so that's going to bring a little spice to the mix, bring maybe a little, um, if it, maybe conflict, but you know, we'll, we'll keep that with them. They're young girls. They've got to go through life. Um, Dohi Sagittarius, which is beautiful. She's going to be the peacemaker, the one to keep everybody from flipping out. And um, Jun Kui, the Gemini, another air sign. So she's just going to be hippy dippy, living her own life on her own world while everybody else is, I don't know, <laughs> figuring themselves. <laughs> That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, and, this dynamic will be interesting. <laughs> very yeah. interesting dynamic indeed. That is so fun because it's like some people don't realize we always talk about on our show, like sometimes these K-pop uh, groups, they're put together almost as competition and they're put together as coworkers. So sometimes it's just like, these are my coworkers. I got to like, you got to learn them and like, you know, stay used to them forever contract period and then hopefully after. Um, all that being said, what is the energy around the song? How do you feel about the song? What do you think? It's super cute. Like, because they're so young, it's giving like, meow, meow, meow. I love <laughs> the video. I know we're not talking about the video yet, but like the production of the song, it's giving you that good, cute girl, like here, introducing, here's the girls. I didn't hear too much rapping. It seemed like they were mostly singers, mostly like they have just, cute little high whispery voices and they they harmonize really well together as also so um everything i heard i i really enjoyed like the little wave way i don't know what that means i don't know <laughs> no, what that means i think it's, <laughs> i think it's one of those conglish things where like for them the wordplay might make a little bit more sense if you knew like korean or like the way they're pronouncing things or like, the 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 context of the song because they mention in this song like going to the not going to the sea but like having nothing to do on a lazy weekend so it's kind of oh. talking about like just being carefree and like just saying hi to the world and going wherever you you know wherever life takes them um so i think that's kind of it also might be a double play where it's like how hey, we're waving we're like hi, we're saying hi to you this is our way of doing things so it could be like a double meaning with with korean you know with k-pop they with, with those things they'd be like girl <laughs> There were several thousand meanings. Did you miss them all? You're like, yes, I did. Like, like every so, last one of them. Every <laughs> single last one of them. Yeah, you know, for me, I feel like the song is quintessential K-pop girl group sound. You have uh, Chae Jung, who was basically one of the first, like, visuals in K-pop. One of the Whoa. biggest companies is now celebrating their 30th freaking year of existence. So it's like he has been through all of the sounds. He's been with the standard of the K-pop sound, you know, with like uh, Son Yoshides, SNSD. Um, so I think this kind of has that girly vibe to it, but not being about love, being mm. more about life. Um, like I said, the lyrics on it is a little bit less about like, oh my God, I love you. We're going to be so beautiful. It's more like, I don't know what I'm going to do today, but I hope it's fun. Or we'll see what the day uh, where it takes us. I like this thought. It's very sugary and like sweet in terms of vocal delivery. And then the instrumental are kind of like a bubbly version of like future based hip hop because there is some definitely some hip hop in here, but it's so cute where it's just like, I don't see a Western artist doing this. It's not going to happen. So it's very distinctively Korean pop. Um, mm -hmm. So <laughs> um, I will say their voices sound so like same, same right now. I couldn't really tell them apart, which sucks a little bit. But then again, I also don't know these girls, but I think it's a good thing and a bad thing. But for the sake of like the song, it's good because it's like, there are definitely a clear like uniformity of like these crystal poppy tones. So everyone's very high, bright voice. So it makes sense for their concept. Um, I think it's going to be interesting with Say My Name because conceptually speaking, they can do anything. It's not like, you know, their name is like, you know, bad villain. So they have to do like the girl crush concept or like I'm or like black pink. You're like, oh, there's two different kind of things. Say My Name could be anything, whatever name they decide to adopt. Uh, will fit the concept. So I feel like for this song, uh, the lyrics, the, the the vocals fit the whole vocal tone of the group. Um, I will say, though, for this song, it's kind of in the vein of Weekly's After School, um, but After School's is a little bit more punchier. It has moments where you're like, ooh, uh, the, the harmonies are really like a lot more... Uh, 
distinctive. There's more like pop out moments, more like earwormy moments. This song for me didn't have too much earworm in uh, terms of like vocals, like the chorus, mm-hmm. yes ish, and then the production, kind of, but nothing as strong as Weekly. But Weekly's not doing what Weekly used to do. So right mm-hmm. now that whole space is wide open for that cutesy harmonic very bright young girl concept and they're they, they don't, don't sound like new jeans and they don't sound like illet eyelet so that's yeah good. um but yeah this is this is not a bad song i listen to the album this is definitely the stronger song on the album mm. but and they, they don't really have a sound so if this is what the sound that they're going to kind of go with we'll see i don't know it might work for them if they keep doing it and get better at it but even the album will kind of kind of just had different kind of genres that just didn't really make me go, okay, this group is going to be like X, Y, and Z. It's just kind of like a bag of like randomness. <laughs> yeah, so, from, what I've, from what I've seen, it does seem like the only reason this group is getting as much attention as it is. I guess first off, Hitomi was a contestant on, I think, one of the produce shows. Uh-huh. So people oh. were excited that she's uh, debuting or re-debuting. I forget if she was in something else. Um, but then also, of course, because it's, it's Jae Jung's group because at first i was kind of like i don't really get why they're yeah, suddenly but... so big because i right. honestly because i was kind of expecting maybe a cupid moment like a 50 50 cupid oh, moment oh. where the song is just so catchy it's so good that it's a brand new group that everyone's just catching on to the song this song is not that like i think if this was released by any other group it would kind of right. not really gain that much traction here because i agree with you it's it's catchy ish but I think because the tones don't really stand out and it is quite chill, it just doesn't make too much impact. It's kind of a good, like, easy listening song you can have on in the background. Mm. Um, which is, yeah, it's just interesting to, to kind of have that as your debut. Like, it's not much of a, a statement. But, uh, Vanessa, I agree with you. I think the production is awesome. Like, I think mm. if you're going for this cute sound, I love all the bubble sounds, all the little pops, the high synths, the kind of video gamey sounds there's the cat meow in there as well like I, <laughs> cats i guess are just a oh, thing yeah. right now <laughs> yeah, we'll meow. Cats. yeah we'll discuss that more i guess we get to the video but like it feels like it's i don't know it's a trend at the moment and i don't really under don't really know who came up with that um like is it just because new jeans had that <laughs> bunny rabbit, and then yeah. everyone's like we need an animal and they all chose a cat <laughs> like i don't know <laughs> like, hey, cats. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Because yeah. new jeans monopolize that that rabbit. You can't I say, guess. you yeah. know, like yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, don't talk about my baby girl's new jeans. Oh mm. my god! I don't even think if we could even go into it. Those are my girls, and I just it breaks my heart. Oh my god! Yeah, we may to need know... a bonus reading on them at the end yeah. of this episode. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Exclusive I to Patreon know. members. Come yes, join us. Yes. Listen, y'all. Sorry, <laughs> y'all. Pay the Grab extra it. money. Come on. <laughs> she, you, you heard the woman. All right. So moving on, moving right along, we have Player Three, Espa with Whiplash, and this was done by Mark Lowe, Neil Ormandy, and Soki Siren, along with Shift Key and Leslie. All right. Can we get a read on the girl group? Espa. Espa, okay. First card to come out is the Working Together in Harmony card. So it, I feel like at this point in their evolution, they're really kind of getting into their groove and figuring out who they are. Um, Knight of Pentacles is also coming out for them. And when Knights come out, it's all about patience, especially Knight of Pentacles. You see how he's walking really slow, just pulling his horse behind him. Like they... They've come to that point where they've worked so hard sure. and now they're they're coming to a really good pentacle for themselves. And then they are also getting the sun shining on them, which I was I'm being told to pull another under the card for them. The sun is shining. So I, I'm like, Espa, keep it up, honeys. Oh you Indeed. Know, I love we're that. Gonna, we're gonna get into it a little bit later, but what you're saying kind of pertains to what I put in my notes. So not saying like, you know, I'm all knowing, but it's kind of nice that 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 synchronicity has occurred or not yet, but it's going to in a couple uh, minutes. Um, <laughs> so stay tuned. Stay tuned, CCTV fam. Um, so, yes. How do you feel about Whip Whip Blast? <laughs> um, listen, honey, take me straight to the club. Make me st- I'm stumping on you hoes. I'm wearing <laughs> like 
the tall lace up boots. My heels are all the way up to my nose. Like I'm just punching girls in the face, walking through the club. <laughs> Let me into my section. Let me into my section. Where yes. are my bottles? Like that's Don't. what the song <laughs> does for me. Like, the the just looks on their faces like they are so like i don't care about you but i do but uh who are you like i just <laughs> oh it's so um, like i really really like this whiplash song and it just it's catchy the whiplash got me like every time i'm like hold on i want to do the little the little thing <laughs> the little clap that yeah. <laughs> just break my neck <laughs> um lovely production it's just like we're we're grabbing the gals and taking them to the club and that's what they did on this song yeah i mean this is a good example like you were saying of uh the club sound the the it just it creates a feeling you always want to create like a soundscape not always but it's good when you can create a soundscape take me into a world make me imagine i've got a bar make me feel like i'm fighting from my spot in the thing like last night i went to the vogue ball like i told you all last night if this song would have came on, honey, mm. honey, the girls would have been growling, all right? Um, this song is a good example of how diverse hyper pop is. And I think um, it's interesting because with Espa, you can get very exhausted with the sonics of their singles. They're loud, they're in your face, but they have delved and dived into hyper pop. The PC music thing, the whole thing that what that Sophie was doing, that what, what Charlie did with the whole summer, basically, right? But it doesn't sound super derivative. Like, could could she do this? Yeah, totally, totally, she could have done it. But I don't think necessarily of her. And the reason I don't is because you have this metallic cold beat mixed with these R and B vocals. She probably oh. doesn't do R and B smooth. She gives you the 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 voice of I don't care, the voice of cool, the voice of effects that fit sonically almost as an instrument with her music these girls are trained to sing r&b and to rap with this kind of like tone that sounds like a black scent which is whatever but the whole idea is to kind of deliver this warmth not like this valley girl thing like uh what song was it um spicy it was giving valley girl and that's mm. totally fine give that but for this song you have to go with a big splash you have to kind of sing like this everything has to float and it has to be airy not dry and fried we love a good vocal fry but it didn't call for it could they have done it yes shout out to giselle for freaking getting lines mm. karina karina usually is like bam 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 winter usually bam 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 the whole song and then giselle's like i have a line right do i have a line in this song my girl was in and out over all around i loved it i was happy for her because her voice stood out to me i'm so used to hearing um winter and karina especially karina she can sing, yeah. she can rap, yeah, but hers is a little bit more nasally. Giselle is kind of, is a little bit deeper, so it sounds smoother for me. Um, Ning Ning's second verse sent me, um, shout out to the songwriter, the top liner, dude, oh my God, that second verse came around, and I was like, ooh, yes, yes. Um, for me, I feel like where the song not falls short, but I'm like, oh God, I want some more. Um, I guess plateaus, not fall short. It goes yeah. up and it's kind of just yeah. stays, is at the bridge. The bridge build is so haunting. It is building for like this diva house moment. It's 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 giving whack 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 whack. It's giving all of that that I totally wish that toward the end of the song we would have gotten some interjections of belting, not the whole yeah, yeah. not the vocal slide thing that SM does, but some like top harmony of someone going whiplash, da, 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 da. something to kind of really send it like a like a oh yeah, like a moment of Kool Aid Man through the wall of all of that technological, digital sonic. But aside from that, like you said, in my notes, I have the song that's very step on you, foot on the neck. I just mm. wish we would have gotten something that would have snapped the neck, like very much like dip on the floor. You yeah. know, so wham, I wanted that at the end. That's my only thing. Mm. But that's just me being greedy. That's just me being greedy. That's just me being greedy. They can just... do that with a live arrangement. Ah, don't play with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love a hybrid, you know, where they... Turn yes. into a remix at the end. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> but yeah, this is very much what I want from Espa. Uh. Like they just fit the kind of cool and icy kind of thing. And this is very much what I think La Seraphim has been trying to go for <laughs> with like crazy and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. But this just <laughs> this just feels 
like not forced at all. Like the execution yeah. feels so natural to them. Like right. vocally, kind of what you were saying, like the balance is so good. The transition from the head voice to the belt, the breathiness of it, it just, it doesn't feel forced at all. Like it feels like that's where they just sit really well. Uh, and then production wise, this is very on trend. It's very much what is going on just in dance pop overall. Uh, and it has that kind of like you're a couple drinks in. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it, has, it has that kind of feeling to it, which I love. Um, so, yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite Espa songs in a while. I'm going to be honest, Burr. the last few singles, I haven't paid too much attention. Burr, uh, but this does feel like a moment. And there have been people in my life who have just seen the video who are not K-pop fans who are very into the song. So Burr. that's always a good sign. Yes. I mean, coming yeah. from Armageddon, like mm. Armageddon, is, uh, this is not a bad uh, shift at all. Um, so, yeah, I mean, at this point, we are at the end of the first round, the song but round. Hold on. Hold oh. on. I didn't get to say their, their uh, star signs, you oh, guys. Wow. Yeah. Espa, <laughs> Karina, <laughs> she's an Aries. So she's a fire sign, but she's also kind of a baby, even though she's the oldest. I feel like she's the baby of the group. Um, Giselle being a Scorpio is going to keep everybody together, but also be a little aloof. Uh, Winter being the Capricorn is the earth of the group, like holding everybody together as well. And then Ning Ning Libra Scorpio is also baby. So it's like they've got two baby energies and two like a grown mama energies. And it feels like they're kind of like balancing each other in a very nice way, especially with the Ning Ning Giselle a uh, connection of both being Scorpio. Um, Scorpios right. always stick together, and so they probably gang up on the Capricorn and Aries all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we are at the closing of this round. We must pick our winner for the song round, okay? So, Vanessa. <laughs> Miss Vanessa, yes. what do you choose as your winner for this round? My winner for this round is Whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to. It's so good. It's so punchy. And it's it's mature. And I feel like yeah. compared to the other two groups who are still babies, who are still fighting themselves, Espa kind of has like a leg up on them because they they know themselves just a little bit more and it feels more confident and more sure. I agree with you. Whiplash is it for me. Yeah, I have to agree with both of you. Whiplash is for sure the winner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> round two. Well, let's see if we agree for round two, which is Ooh. about the video. So back to Kiss of Life, Get Loud. So Chantel, start us off. What do you think of the video? Okay, so this video, I just want to say I was just happy to see black people in the video, y'all. I was like, oh, is that? okay, we, we getting in there. Because, you know... It's interesting to have K-pop, to have so many influences from R&B music, but then, like, fly everybody else in or fly to everywhere else where we are not. Um, you know? So it's nice to see it. That and Honey, they were, they were everyone was looking very good together. Thanks. It was giving. I was very excited. Everyone was sitting there grooving and shaking and moving, and the girls were grooving and shaking and moving. So the energy all matched. It just felt so, like, you know how New Jeans has, like, this, uh, unisex Tom Way groove, almost like anyone can do this choreography. For the girls of Kiss of Life, they have that kind of going on where it's like their moves, even though it's very much choreographed, it feels like, you know how the movies try to make it seem like they're at a, you're, like, like a, like a choreographed party scene? That's what it feels like. If it's a really good, well choreographed party scene, it feels like, oh my gosh, it was seamless. It was, oh my God, I want to be a part of that. And they have that going on with them, especially here in the video, and you can see it. It's giving outrageous, finally released music video with the oh, no. street scene. The cursed video. <laughs> I know, I know. But like the, <laughs> but the, the finally, like the releasing, they're like, listen, we couldn't release this, but y'all can film on this street. Like, you know, how they have like the same angle of like the, the avenue in front of the building. So it reminded me of outrageous in that sense where it was like the wet, the wet pavement and they're dancing on it, wearing their street clothes and shaking butt. So again, they're kind of leaning toward that 2000s. There's a little bit of like fantasy in the video where you have, um, I guess, Nati in this little weird like over an Ishi moment in the in a restaurant. Yeah. Um, you have like a, a shaker with confetti in it. 
So a lot of the effects kind of are very like fantastic where you where they're blending into each other and like hyper realistic without being like super Alice in Wonderland. Like at mm. one point, I think Julie like, reaches her hand and it ends up in Nazi scene. And then mm-hmm. I think Hanul or her, which remember is shaking the little green shaker in his confetti for someone else's scene. So it, it, again, they're doing a nice little seamless like edit. Shout out to the um, video colorist. They're doing such an amazing job. Like the fantasy scene with, I think it was Hanul who was singing, who had her wings. It, it, came, it comes around like one time, but it fits because of what's going on in the pre-hook and like how she's singing, what she's singing about. Um, I do like that they do call back to the subway because the subway for them was like their debut video like um, imagery. They were always on this like fringy little subway, but now the subway is like covered in confetti and people are singing their songs and it kind of has a little bit more of a symbolic meaning to it. So it's like people are getting loud with them. People are getting on board with them. Um, So I think I like this one in terms of how they look and what they're giving me in terms of energy. But I can't say I want to go back and go, oh, my God, I need to see that again. Like, there was a moment in this video that made me go, girl, run mm. that back. Run that back. I will say that my favorite dance scene um, is not actually the street scene, but the one with the Get Loud, where everyone is, like, uh, dancing on that, like, reddish kind of floor. That Get Loud background, that one I like. Mm. Um, not, as, not the street scene, which is kind of a surprise because I kind of gave it so much praise. But, yeah, I think the video is decent for what it is. I think at this point, Midas Touch is kind of ate everybody up when it came out that video was freaking gorgeous so they kind of have to live up to that for me but the video is okay <laughs> yeah you know I, like yeah I, <laughs> I also basically just said it's okay i yeah also kind of that i don't know it's all felt a little disjointed i liked actually all the street scenes and the subway kind of plays into that it is kind of the restaurant scene and some of the the studio kind of solo shots and stuff that I felt were just a bit unnecessary. I think because you only see them for like two seconds, three seconds. Right. And it's not like the music changes a lot. So it's not uh, like it's it's representing anything there. I don't know. I just didn't fully understand the full concept of everything. Uh, and also, I think this song, there's a, there's a relaxed vibe to it. it it's the type of song that you can do kind of like a lot of grooves too that you can kind of just like sit in your hips a bit more and, and it, you don't need to try too hard i think but mm-hmm. i think in the video they are trying too hard like it's just it's always just going at a hundred with everything mm-hmm. and it's not they're not like sitting into it and just kind of vibing with it and i think mm-hmm. that's what the song needed and i think that's where the disconnect happens for mm-hmm. me with this one mm-hmm. yeah yeah, totally agree with you on that. Because, you know, when you think about A-pop videos, they can be a lot. They can be <laughs> yeah. too much. And that's what they're known for. Uh, but with this particular song, it didn't feel like it needed a lot of those cutaways. Um, I, mm-hmm. I watched the performance video, just the performance. And I loved just the when they were in the street. And then when they were in the set where it said, get loud in the background, like those two shots were amazing. And then the subway. And I think if they would have just kept that being Mm. the whole feel (laughs) and not trying to like, but we're a K-pop video, so we got to do something else. Like (laughs) (laughs) you you didn't need it, babes. They didn't need it. Um, Uh As as for um, seeing a bunch of people of color, a bunch of black folks, um, it was really nice seeing a bunch of black folks in the video. I love when I get to see that. Um, but like sometimes in K-pop videos, uh, black folks can be used as props. And uh-huh. I did not feel proppy in this video. It felt very much like, no, we're dancing together. This is a team. Like it just felt very communal and rather than, uh, rather than like we're using this because, well, we feel like we have to. The question mark, which <laughs> sometimes I don't know. Maybe they just roll the dice and go, I guess we got to put some black folks in here. <laughs> um, but, but like, really? you, you know what I mean? Absolutely, but with this yeah. particular video, um, it really felt natural and cute. And like Chris, like you, like you said, if they would have just kind of like chilled out a little bit mm-hmm. and not been so K-pop and just like felt with the song and just made a, a video it would have been a hundred percent for me, but right now they're getting an eighty percent out of a mm. hundred. Mm. Mm. That's valid. So this would have been the moment to actually pay attention to American style videos and actually lean into our our aesthetic. I'll bet. All right, moving right back to our girls of player two. Say my name with Wave Wave. 
wave, wave, way. <laughs> God. So <laughs> for this video, um, now I described the song, if I could like have a, like a description for it, it was like a summertime vibe that was released in the fall. And unfortunately, this video is yeah. like the same way. It's like like several months too late because I'm pretty sure Soul is like right in the middle of like their autumnal seasons as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, the pool scene, the brightness of it, the colors of it. I guess if you want to introduce branding, it makes sense in a way. I don't know. It's just a little too late for me. Um, I don't know what happened in terms of release date or like why they decided to release this um, now and the way they did with the colors. But I get the branding of the cat. I think the cat was like slammed onto us. Um, <laughs> in terms of what they did with uh, the cat. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah. Literally. Like, 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 yeah. Like, 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 you know, those cat hitting videos. That's what happened with this video. Um, I think with what they did, Chris and I had mentioned in our last pop-off, Meow, uh, the girl group from Black Label, they they could have leaned more into the kind of like silliness of the kitty cat. This group did it on 100. The director was like, yo, you, you say less. Y'all got cats as a mascot? Say less. Um, the cat in the video is a call to their album cover. So it's, a, it's like a gray cat on their album cover, which I think is so cute. That cat looks like it's getting ready to start some trouble. Um, <laughs> so I just I just wonder if the the mascot has any tie to their name or if it's like we talked about just for the sake of matching the new jeans um, <laughs> marketing. Excuse me. The video is like a Snapchat Insta snow filter attack. I will say that like it's just I feel like someone was like, yo. Look on Snow, look on Snapchat, look on Insta and tell me what's cute, twinkly, and let's do that. I mean, I like some of the gemstone effect and like some of the effects like the like scrapbook stuff. It was kind cool, of cute. Cool. But again, I think the season just the season has passed for this. So it just felt a little like mm. I mean, it was already overwhelming, but it just felt just kind of like, I don't know, not stupid. I don't I had to find a better word than stupid, but it just wasn't it wasn't <laughs> good. It, um, it wasn't good. Um, I the giant cat paws as a POV. I feel like they should have just used that to kind of introduce a girl, like almost like a cat kind of following around. Uh, no, it would have been creepy. Okay, I don't know how to make it like not creepy because <laughs> it was a giant cat. All right, yeah. so I'm trying to make it make sense, but a lot of it was filter. A lot of it was like them cute dancing scenes, and then there was a giant ginger cat, which made no sense to their branding because you've already shown me all these gray cats gray mascot cat gray animated cat gray this and, and now suddenly there's a giant orange cat behind them just perching i don't get that because now you've already introduced me to this kind of thing and it's not cohesive so you know i'm, I'm nitpicking a little bit but again the branding is thrown in my face to like it's a gray cat it's a gray cat it's a gray cat kitty 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 and then there's a random garfield you feel me like so <laughs> i mean I mean, all the animated cats were different colors, though. So I don't think there's a color attached to their cat. <laughs> yes, there is. On their album, the cat is gray and has, like, white oh. paws. It's so cute. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, aside from, like, little nitpicky things like that, you're right. The cats were all different colors. Um, The girls <laughs> looked cute. They looked cute. But not, mm -hmm. like, baby cute. You know what I'm saying? And with the little cat paws thing, that can be seen as, like, kind of, like, juvenile. But they did a good job of not making it so, like, Oh my God, Eggio. So I appreciate that. But like this video again, I don't, I don't know, man. It, the brand, I don't know. Like, what are you trying to do with the video? I just didn't understand what the main goal was. And I, I think mean, I think problem. it's memorable because of <laughs> all the ways they used cats. So I think I'm actually yeah. okay with that because right now, since I don't really know anything about them, but what I yeah. do know about them is, is the cat thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's literally the cat only ladies. thing. So Cali. yes, they are really like bashing our head with it. Yeah. But you know, it's her debut single. It's a very saturated market. I think that's actually okay in uh -huh. this case. <laughs> yeah. And I think the way they use the cats were pretty cute overall. Yes. yes. Um, and I did like the little kind of stickers and kind of all the added like filtery stuff. I think I think it worked. Like uh -huh. they, you can tell they're kind of high school age, or you know. So so I don't know. I think it all worked for the song. Yeah. Uh, but again, same with the song. There's just not much replay value here. There's just nothing yeah. about it that really captures my attention. There wasn't one specific scene that really like made me, ooh, like that's cool. You know, at you least know? with the meow one, they oh. had, you know, when they were that the scene Yeti? where they're all on the giant cat, like that was cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, know you, you know, like the cat chises with the little, 
the cat like oh it's fine <laughs> i mean to be fair i'm also just like not i'm not the target audience for this because i'm just not that into these super juvenile girl, <laughs> yeah, girl groups, and so that's this is also just isn't for me <laughs> no that's super valid though okay go off <laughs> yeah that makes so much sense and like just looking at their ages because i wrote down their their years 2010 is the monday Oof. Oh my gosh! 2010. Oh, you know what I was doing Lord. in 2010? <laughs> I can't remember what I was doing. <laughs> Seriously, oh and, um, the oldest to Toby is 2001. So they're all like, in my, for me, the video made sense with all the stickers and the filters. Um, I would have totally taken the pool scenes out because, again, that made sense. Like, why are we in the pool? <laughs> this is not summertime. It doesn't make sense. But like the cats, that's what got me. Uh-huh. I love the cats. Like, I wanted more cats. I'm like, if y'all are going to do cats, oh, yeah. I need big cats, little cats, small cats, <laughs> tiny cats, cats of all colors. Give me a rainbow cat. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, like you could have taken out the scene where they're just sitting being pretty on the bus. Oh, like, get yeah. rid of that and just give me them rolling around with cats. Put them in little cat <laughs> outfits. Where the the, <laughs> the cat shiest tea. That was incredible <laughs> to me. I'm like, you have them holding up a, a cat motel with little cat guns. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. See, that's a you concept. Know, that's yes. what I'm talking about. They need to, if this is where they're going to go, I would love for them to like flow into this cat thing because when, when I saw them, like they did play juvenile to me, but they are young. But also, it was not so aggio to where it was like, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, what mm-hmm. are you doing? No, it was just cute enough for where you're like, oh, these are some really adorable girls, and they just they just love cats and hanging out, <laughs> hanging out. Yeah, <laughs> that's about yeah. what super about. So yes, the adorable strangeness that is say my name. Um, so great. strange, <laughs> so strange. <laughs> I would give it a seventy out of a hundred. Mm, okay, valid. that's valid. Mm, mm. Okay, that brings us to the last video, which is Whiplash. Um, you know, they have come... That snap is hilarious. <laughs> they have come so far from Black Mamba's um, Meow Wolf cyberspace hyper-colorful unicorn puke colors. Um, like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I loved it. I love the warrior ice skating princess thing. I'm here for it. But it's good to grow and develop and still maintain your visual identity. And this song oh, does yeah. that. So they've gone from all this iridescence to this black, white, silver palette. And it's sickening. They went from, like, being sick to, like, sickening, you know? Um, so, like, <laughs> there's still this level of, like, the digital fantasy, but it's more connected in the realism. So you have, like, a, a psych wall. Oh, we all know what that is. You have cameras, you have all this technology technology that is practical. So it makes everything feel like an augmented reality as opposed to like we're in um what's it called? We're sink diving into um yeah. um what's that world called again? Uh, Guangya. Guangya. Oh, I hate Guangya. I hate no, Guangya. Guangya's dead. I know. But literally I had a beef with Guangya. Every episode we talked about Guangya, I was like, I hate Guangya. I should make a master cut of that. But my point is <laughs> they have finally exited Kwangya and now it's kind of in the world that we're in they're kind of keeping the concept whoever's directing the video because whatever this like this I don't want to call it a MacGuffin but this little metal piece or whatever we kept focusing on it focusing on it it's Ning Ning's heel Giselle like swipe takes the heel she's falling down and for Giselle but Giselle was a sn- not snow winter winter snow. they have kitty cat <laughs> names actually the girls winter Karina Ning Ning Giselle um but yeah, um, so winter, winter, yeah, winter has the heel that's now configured and it explodes. So it kind of like, why are we focusing on this? So I think it has a level of absurdity as well that works. Um, like they're so cool and they're so beautiful and they're so editorial and their faces are literally dirtying up the frame. Like you have different dimensions of how close someone is or serving you looks. But then you have this absurd moment of Giselle snatching Ning Ning's heel off. You have Ning Ning laying on the ground with a wine glass. It's like, <laughs> why? But then again, why not? It's like, it's not what you think it is. They're serving looks, but like, what are we looking at? And I enjoy that. And the dancing wasn't like, look at the dancing, look at the dance. We're focusing on the dancing, except for the chorus part. So this video is definitely uh, not like, wow, 
oh my gosh, so much is going on here, like with the freaking girls video or like their earlier videos. But it's still as effective because it's cool. It fits the song. It's not super extra and they look great. <laughs> yeah, I love this video. I think it's it's refreshing to see them in something so clean. Like, because all their other stuff, it was just so extra with the CGI and then uh -huh. having to fight these monsters. And then they have their digital selves as well, which I'm, I, I'm just glad. I feel like that's retired now, right? Like, I, <laughs> please. I, I, I <laughs> so, think so. Yeah. And so the whole thing just does feel very high fashion, very editorial, uh -huh. very high brow, which is great. And it does remind me of Western music videos a bit more, actually. Uh -huh because of the simplicity of it like this goes back to kind of what we've been saying what we were saying earlier about kiss of life like mm -hmm. they don't they didn't need all those extra scenes like we literally only have like two or three spots that they're in this whole video mm -hmm. right and it's captivating like they yeah. used they used the camera work they used them to, uh, to keep it interesting yeah. and i think that's important um and i, I think their performance is so good because it's all just very stoic uh -huh. <laughs> and it works for the song so yeah i think i think it was great there was only one kind of like super heavy cgi moment with that like oh. car explosion yeah it's thing, the bridge, which yeah it was a little it was, that was a little weird but <laughs> i think this video was great and it does have replay value because you notice different things in the background as well yeah 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 yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely like i actually enjoyed this video and with espa i don't know if i'm going to enjoy it or not because it's what you don't know what you're you're gonna get. Uh, but with this, it just felt very mature, mm. and it felt like they're on their grown lady shit, and they're like ready to show the world. Like, look, there's a spot for four girls to you know kind of do their thing, and I feel like this was their moment to put their foot down and say, "Listen, we yeah. can take that spot." Um, I, I loved how it was so just silver and black and white and how they just like their expressions were like, I don't care. I don't, I just, mm -hmm. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. We're not trying hard right now at all. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah. not. And then how at the end, they're just like dangled the arm dangle, like in the different shoes. It was, the fashion yeah. was so great. The wigs were on point. Like my girl, I think Winter was in that short black wig. I was like, what, 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 what is uh, happening? You look amazing. Like everybody <laughs> just had this really great look and they've grown into their faces. They've grown into their bodies. Like it just really, and not in no shade, but like, you know, they were kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now like, you know, I'm looking at their ages. The oldest are 2000, 2001, 2002. Like they are now little little ladies of early 20s showing us that we're grown people now and i'm i'm completely here for it uh -huh, uh -huh. well said i agree with you they grown shoot they grown this is what they happens grown you let women yes <laughs> this is what happens you let 20 something year olds do what they gotta do what um so that brings this video round to a close so although my girls of kiss of life are giving me something you're still not quite there yet. So we're going to give it to Whiplash. That video is great. Yeah, Damn I it. have to give it to Whiplash again as yeah. well. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Damn. Oh, man. And it's hard. Me, opposite of you guys, Um, that cat video, and <laughs> that sound wave way. I don't know what it was, but them cats had me. <laughs> Good. Shoot, stand on <laughs> ten toes. Ten toes. I'm going to stand on my ten toes, and I'm going with Say My Name and them yes. cats. Yes. Yeah, Love it. go off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to our final round. And this is the performance slash choreography round. So mm. round three. Kiss of Life. I'm, I'm going to be honest. The Get Loud choreo did not do it for me the first few times that I watched it. Uh, after watching a few more performances and their later performances, the more recent ones, oh. it's grown on me more. But I think this goes back to what I was saying about the video and that it just tries a little too hard. Sure. And my biggest thing with choreography is how well it matches the music, right? So there is an overall effortlessness to the song and the, and the way the beat is. Uh -huh. And it just feels a little too labored, this choreography. 
it's I was trying to actually analyze it a bit more and I was trying to like kind of learn the chorus a little bit. Sure. It's not a very uh natural groove. Like you actually have to put your body in kind of like weird angle. Like the, for example, that that dance where they're like pointing at their head and then doing like the the kind of body roll hip dip thing down. That's actually a very odd angle to sit in. And then sure. they're in some other position right before that. So you have to very deliberately kind of move into these pictures. And that goes against the song. Because for me, this song is all about just like really simple grooves and really being able to kind of sit into things. Oh. So I just don't think the musicality is fully there for me. It's just a little much. Sure. But then sure. they perform it pretty well. Like, it feels natural when they perform it, like, in their facials and stuff. Or her. I just don't, I don't know. The choreo uh -huh. doesn't fully hit hit for me. Uh -huh. Okay, and um, I'm going to go on ahead and concur. It felt like it was too much. Just too much moving for no reason and trying to make tableau where there didn't necessarily need to be, like, pictures and things. It's like, okay, that's a really cool picture that y'all just made, but, like, why? What'd you do that for? There was no, there was no reason for it. Um, watching their live performance uh, videos, um, it depend for me. It depended on who their backup dancers were, because mm. sometimes you get some raggedy backup dancers, and it just messes up. I'm just keeping it work. <laughs> the rejects get on the stage, all right, all right? And, the, and it just doesn't work. But mm. the girls, like mm. they, they, they stood out. They stood their ground, and like you said. It did get better and better as they kept like doing the the circuit of performances. Um, I don't. I just. I need them to. What is it? How do you say? Lip sync. Make your choice. Are you going to lip sync or nah? Mm. And I would prefer it if they would just lip sync until and just being fit. No, no shade. Get till they get their cardio up a little bit because sometimes you can't hold. The no and dance at the same time. And there are yeah, certain notes, yeah. like one of the girls was trying to hit a note and she can't hold it, uh, this high note while she's dancing. And, and I can hear her go from her trying to, to sing yeah, to yeah. like just stopping. And now it's just the track. And I'm like, baby girl, y'all need to choose better spots. So that's yeah. my take. I get real. When it comes to live vocals, that's where I get very, very critiquey. And so um, there, I was like, maybe either make your choose, either like lip sync the whole thing or just go for it. And let me hear how, let me hear the, the bad notes. Then, just do it, just do it. I also blame the choreographer for that, though, because uh -huh. they also don't give them moves uh -uh. with the thought of the fact that they have to sing uh -huh. while they're doing them. Uh -huh. That is completely disconnected in K-pop, and I hate that. So, yeah. yes. Definitely on the same page. <laughs> that's that's been a that's been our beef for a lot. I mean, that's where I think uh, American artists have always been like, I guess, lucky because the choreographer is like, "No, nah, she got a mic in her hand, dude. Like, <laughs> we can't, we can't do that." Like, like, um, yeah, like <laughs> even Christine, I was watching her like do the dirty performance. We all know she can sing. She danced in the video for dirty, but she has to sing, so she stopped and was like, <laughs> she did like handography just to kind of match everyone. Um. You know, I was trying to look up the choreographer for this dance, but I just, I didn't look hard, I'm not gonna lie to you. But I, so what's sticky last, or this past summer, I complained that the moves were also quite awkward at certain points. Like you don't have to be sitting there popping your back, snapping your tail, tucking and ticking, and all, you ain't got to do all that. Because what you were doing Afro beats for should have been more of a Jamaican kind of dance hall rhythm kind of to everything. And you weren't giving me that. So with this one, like you were saying, there should have been more groups. But it was a lot more snap, snap, sway, sway, check it, check it. Now, for first verse, you want to show off and do your thing? Fine. Whatever. Whatever. Okay. But after that, it should get smoother. It should get cooler. And it kind of did a certain way. There was, like, potential for her to jump in and out. Like, I'm not sure if they did, like, a Frankenstein thing where they hired, like, a Korean team, an American team to do it. Because oh. when they had, like, the group moments toward, like, the ending of the song, even if you watch, like, the performance video with the Western uh, dancers, you can see them kind of, like, act like they're at a freaking party. It, that's why I'm saying, like, it felt kind of like one of those movies when it's done right. It's like, oh, shoot, I wish I was there. There were moments like that. Even when the dancers were kind of dancing, I looked at them like, okay, girl, I see you. That's good, girl. No, mm -hmm. Obviously, the girls are the star of the video, but 
if the dancers are making me feel like, oh my God, I want to learn this, this is fun. The girls are making me feel, because the girls are kind of just like bouncing with them. But some of them had moments I was like, wow, great. So there were potential moments of like good choreography, but unfortunately they just didn't, it didn't stick all of the way. Um, I mean, again, it felt organic in certain parts. Like their like cute, like feminine thing feels organic to me, but it doesn't feel like they're pretending to be these like dancing from the push chicks. They're very much like, it gives you hyper femme. They gave that to you. Unfortunately, what they did with Igloo with all that cool like sex appeal does not translate here. Awful. But I think it was just like, it was okay. I did like some of the informa- the formation where they interlocked or whatever, but it's it's okay. I think what bothers me was the Tatiana like crotch grab with the get loud and they started like, yeah. you know, yeah. I was like, why are we sitting there bust down the piano? I'm like, why is that there? <laughs> Moments like that, I was just like, it stood out to me, but not for the reason that you think it did. You know mm. what I'm saying? Get loud. Yeah. There's hands you can do. You can go hands up. You can, you can, there's so much you can do. You can drop and do a hair flip. You can, you can, yeah. there's so many other things you could do other than making it look like it's a freaking choreography class and not an actual girl group dance. Like, honey, yeah. look at Danny Kane. Like, they, they could have been an instant, yes. an instant. Danny Kane, I guess, in terms of like, if you're a K pop fan and don't really know like older Western group, that is what Kiss of Life is doing. <laughs> it is literally what Kiss of Life is doing. So yes. they should have been, they should have been a lot more smoother with us. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all right. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, That's moving like- on to Say My Name, Wave Way. I think this choreo is very well done, actually. Yeah. The formations are awesome. I love the way it starts with them on the line. There's just so many dynamics in it and so many cute kind of pictures and stuff that they do. They utilize all the members super well. And it's actually very intricate. There's a lot of yeah. handography in there that requires a lot. Like, I don't even know how they were doing some of it. I was, like, trying to follow along a little bit. And I was like, oh, that's tough. And they make it yeah. feel very smooth. So good on them for sure and i like the whole like cat paw thing it totally works it totally yeah. totally works um mm. i will say performance wise though it, it is the extreme choreography of the facials that cool. i don't love in k-pop where every single wink every single facial expression every single everything is so planned like i watched a couple of performances and they literally do the exact same thing in every single one so it's like i can't tell if you're actually having any fun with this like it just does feel like you're just watching a robot like yeah. do this dance and i know that yeah. there isn't an, an aspect of k-pop that is that that they are not human that they are this kind of perfect thing so that's just not for me but in terms of the actual choreography i think it was great it really works with the song yeah yeah totally agree like there's this one part in the choreo where all the girls kind of bend down and one of the girls walks through it was like i don't know what that was but that was so cool so Mm -hmm. there were like lots of really interesting moments in that choreo and and it's so youthful and and like but not too egg yo like we were saying earlier just like we're girls and we like to have fun together and we're friends like just super super cute and and the the simplicity is because you uh chris you said like there's so much like intricate stuff and the fact that they made it look easy they didn't make it look like it was so intricate was also very very impressive excuse me for for these young girls like um i enjoyed it and i thought it was very perfect to go along with the song like that i feel like the dance was the catchiest part of the song i actually Mm -hmm. yeah yeah no oh shoot yeah oh well (laughs) this is an example of an effective uh choreography for the chorus it fit the music as well i think the formations are definitely the the my favorite of all three i'm going to say that like in advance now uh because they don't have background dancers it's just the x amount of them um and the formations are really clever uh like you mentioned the two lane thing the kitty hands and the waving choreography is really cute because, again, it goes back to what I was saying about that double play of the waves and also, like, the water waves. Um, and then when they do the B part of the chorus, they actually get into some, like, hip-hop grooves. And I'm like, yeah. yes, thank you. This makes sense. This is how you... This is musicality. This is musicality. <laughs> so, I mean, ah, man, watching the performances, 
you know, it was rehearsed. I think at this point, after we saw Ive with um, Eleven with their facial, we kind of just got over it at that point. Like, they did such a good job that when they kept doing it, it was like, okay, we get it. <laughs> Stop. Um, but like, <laughs> but when we first saw it, we were like, yes, oh my God, it's giving. Um, so now there's a little less of an organic thing. But I mean, for what they're given, they're they're, they're they are employees. They would do if you would do it for a check too. So they guess they're doing it like that. <laughs> <laughs> they doing hey, their yeah. job. You know, yeah. I was an employee. You know, um. But <laughs> all, all all jokes aside, though, I think my favorite thing about their whole concept is that they're going for that schoolgirl concept. It goes with the words. It goes with the song. Goes with the tone. But it's not like the super cute, like almost jailbait thing. And it's not like sexy schoolgirl. There is a charm to what they're doing. The choreography also reflects that. It's not like they're jumping with Maybe. their their fists bent and they're shaking and wiggling. You know what I'm talking about, oh, right? Yeah. Like a little, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh no, God dang it, what am I watching? It felt and... like I was just watching a bunch of girls on a dance. Like this is something I would choreograph for my dance team for that that weird little age range of like a 12 year old to that 18 year old, which I do have. So it's like, how do you find that balance? And this choreography does, it's charming. Um, and yeah, just a shout out to the bridge formation and choreography section all the way to the end of that song i sat there and watched it over and over again because the way they utilize those girls as like like sound waves for that freaking production in the bridge i was like holy crap oh yes. my gosh you know the, the hands the bubble with... popping and the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. i was Very like cool. holy crap i love it it wasn't too but they weren't like freaking tutting they were using <laughs> their bodies they're bouncing bro i yeah. was like this is great and so I, again shout out to i think it's nine and kina these are the only names i found okay um, after nice. looking we don't know who they are but go off y'all go off nice <laughs> <laughs> and just to interject on uh the facial expressions thing because i'm a stickler for a dancer that's gonna give face uh, especially when there's been a generation of like these k-pop groups that are just like oh my god oh, yeah. face and nothing oh. but then you get the, now it's like do too much we're doing too much and it's like <laughs> I, I i need your facials to come from an organic place like because you're here you're in the moment you're you're performing a song you're getting this chance to live your dream you're an idol like give me the face you want to give me because you're having a good time not the not wink that they paint you to <laughs> to. <laughs> i mean i actually think kiss of life is great yeah. if you watch Gosh. a couple of their performances they oh. are very organic and they do actually you do feel like they're having fun with it yeah even if they oh, are yeah. but they feel like you feel like they are <laughs> yes. yeah so yeah very true like at the end they were like cutting like eh, yeah eh. like that was really cute yeah. yeah they like their song they like their songs for sure <laughs> um moving on to the last the uh, uh, contestant which is whiplash yeah. all right it's so clean. It's so clean. I I very much appreciated how minimal it was, and it probably doesn't help that I watched it right after these last two as well. <laughs> but there is beauty in simplicity, and this is just such a good example of that. Like, I don't think a lot of people who who don't dance too much really realize it, but it's actually uh. this type of choreography that's actually harder sometimes than the really yeah. kind of craziness that a lot of k-pop is right now because uh -huh. if one person's angle is slightly off like if everyone's uh -huh. facing 45 but one person's at 60 it's yeah. really obvious yep. right or if one person's shoulder moves more than someone else's or is uh -huh. slightly off it's really obvious so <laughs> this was actually very impressive because i yeah. could just I just imagine myself as a choreographer trying to get all four of them to match completely. And that's that's usually the most annoying part about dance rehearsals, <laughs> actually, is it's what we call the cleaning process. Um, so just major respect for that. But uh -huh. Also, I think this choreo, it just works with the song. It's super effective. It lets them kind of breathe into the moments. They kind of have to keep their core really tight like the whole time because there are just so many moments where it goes from really quick to them suddenly having to kind of melt into something and then having <laughs> yeah. to stop all together. It's just a really good core control. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I as a dancer, I really respect this choreography. I think it was really, really well done. Uh, well, and as a non-dancer that just likes watching people dance, um, I enjoyed it a lot. It's that simplicity that you're talking about. It's not simple at all what they did. Like, there were parts where they what one of them melted all the way down to the ground and they were like stacked up on top of each other and then got back up all fast. And I mean, it, it's just really 
really well done. And um, I happened to watch the relay that they did because I love a good relay. I'm old school that way. And I was watching them to see if they were having fun. I was what because that's where you get to kind of let loose and be silly. And they didn't really let loose as much as I wanted them to. But like to see how precise and beautiful the movements were on each individual girl without like the whole group or without the backup dancers is really, really cool. Like you really got to see how like, I mean, these girls are dancing like mm. with a capital I N G at the end. And again, I'm going to go back to that part at the end where they all just collapse with the arms just shaking at the end. I mean, how hard yet easy is that move to do it and to look cool and to not look sloppy I mean, they 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 did that. They whiplashed me. They they lashed my whip. See, they lashed my whip. They lashed the <laughs> whip. Oh man, you know, I think this broken neck dance is great. The bro- ah, my neck. I love that. Who? I have been in a. I have gotten whiplash. My friend. Oh God. And I was like, shoot. Oh. Hello. This is the most obvious thing. I love choreography. When you're like so obviously like. This is whiplash. Like, who hasn't grabbed their neck when it hurt? This right here, <laughs> love that. The double take thing, mm. that is what they mean, obviously, by the whiplash. But, like, both oh, loved it. Um, so I think in terms of, like, the cleverness, I always love, I say choreography, but cleverography, whatever. Same thing with the, uh, say my name. It's clever. There's moments where I'm like, oh, my God, I wish I did that. Um, so, yeah, I think this choreography has a good mix of the posing and some tutting formations and the flowing. It is so difficult to milk. And for people who don't know what milk is, like if you hit like a, a mark at the top and then you kind of melt down, you kind of mm. have a flow. People don't realize there's so many pockets. Like you as a songwriter, me as a singer, Chris as a dancer, does all the other stuff that he does. But we all understand that there is a there is a point from A to B, obviously, but there's so much time in between A and B that we need to fit either with like melismic singing and some trills and some runs or with just one e and a two e and a three and a snap and they all do it so nicely like you said the relay dance they have to move their hair they have to make sure that that everything is so like i mean it's sm it's supposed to be like that but it's not easy to move all that weave karina's hair is chopped let's be real here it's it's she's got a bob right now it's chopped but when she gets that weave in her hair you can't tell her nothing (laughs) hairography is so hard i teach heels and having to tell a girl who has straight hair to lift her chin so that it doesn't go in her face. And for all of them to be there together is so great. The in- the synchronicity is what really makes this dance so, like, sick. Nothing about it is difficult. They're putting hands. They're doing, you know, hip-hop grooves. They're doing chest pops. That Some of them are a little awkward, I'm not going to lie. But <laughs> they're together. <laughs> yes. um, and, and again, as a fan of them, I'm not like, I've listened to the albums in and out. I can't say this album's like my favorite of them. Even for all the groups we've reviewed, the albums are not that great. But every time they do like a single or release or whatever, sometimes the choreography not together. Sometimes they feel like they're disjointed. Like with freaking girls or like, I forgot one of the dances, like it was Frankenstein so badly that the dance just looked really sloppy. This is the most together they've been like in the past several releases. Giselle is not pushed off in the corner somewhere getting yeah. hidden. I don't know what's happened from like six months ago to now, like whatever, a year ago from now, but good. They look like an actual group now and not like, so you're here. You're all here. Um, Welcome to the meeting. Did you get my last like slack freaking ping? Like it feels like they were all at the meeting. They were all there. They were all, they all clocked in for work. So shout out to them. Shout out to the choreographer. Um, Yeah, this one's, this one's good. I like this one. So. Hey. <laughs> Okay, Indeed. so to choose a winner, yeah, I have to give it to Whiplash. I do. Dang. They win all three for me this time. Dang. Yeah, straight up Whiplash. That choreo was everything. I gotta give it to Whiplash. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Whiplash too. You know, time, <laughs> time, time. Pressure makes diamonds, yo. They did. They had time yeah. to add all this perfected. So shoot, it shows. Yeah. It <laughs> really does. I mean, I saw them live. What when they first debuted maybe three years ago in oh. LA, and I was like, "Who are these children, and yeah. why are they these children with no faces just dancing Oof. on the stage?" Uh. Like they had there was nothing, and so for me to see them now and see this like 
growth and progress is it's very beautiful. Like I think that's that's the beauty of K-pop is like we watch these kids grow up right in front of our faces. We watch yeah. them find themselves. We watch mm -hmm. them figure out what they even want to do with their lives. Like, are they sure they want to do this? Well, you're doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really cool. And yeah. I know I can be harsh because like I'm a I'm a stickler and I and I and yeah. I know excellence. I mean, listen. Yeah. Bon ton son young done. And I'm not even gonna I'm a B big BTS and they weren't even my firsts, but like they weren't even my first loves. But I'm gonna go on ahead and say, like, when you see the excellence of people like them and Red Velvet and now these new kids, it's like, all right, you see what you got to look up to. Let's bring it on. But I also realized they got to grow because they're still baby. So it's because it's weird, yeah. like, you know, double double edged sword for sure. For sure. Um, You know, I think overall, we've all kind of unanimously unanimously decided that we're just kind of took. I know for me. It did take it. But for the other groups, I think um, it is a testament to your readings, first of all. What we've been all been saying throughout it is a huge testament to your readings. Um, but it's 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 interesting to kind of see all of the difference. And like one's in the middle of their career, like Kiss of Life's not in the middle, but like they kind of like have what, a year and some change now. One right. group just started and the other group's had long time to figure out what to do with their bodies and their faces right so um it was a little mildly unbalanced but i think at this point k-pop is at such a high standard that it's like you got to come correct at at all times not unfortunately but maybe a little bit of fortunately and un un unfortunately for both fortunately and unfortunately mm. fortunately um, so and you, unfortunately yeah. yeah so it's like there's pressure but also like there's something to aspire to um but yeah, yeah, I feel like uh, Espa's probably the strongest choice um, just because their team was not playing around. The song is not like, wow, their best song. Like Armageddon is probably one of my favorite because you put Armageddon, Armageddon. Like the, the wordplay on that, I love Supernova. That whole era, I refuse to let go of because I listened to the album too. And I was like, damn, the album's good. The album was, that album was way better than what we got this time around. Mm. I'm telling you, right? I listened to all their albums. And I was like, Ugh. But in terms of what it is, the song is the better song. The video is the better video. The choreography is the better choreography. So yeah. Yeah. I am really curious what Say My Name is going to do. Because yes. there's only so, like like I said earlier, they have all this hype because uh -huh. of Zhejiang mainly. And that's not going to last, like, you know. And yeah. so this is perfect timing because what's next? Are you? Is that what you're reading? That's what I'm <laughs> reading. Like when you brought up Say My Name. Yeah. Um, so Page of Pentacles comes out. This is the the kid of of the of the deck. Like this is the child. So they really are like they they're babies, and they, that's what the cards are saying. But also King of Cups. I think this is representative of the guys. Who's that guy? Y'all keep saying Sejong. Um, Sejong. King Sejong. Who are you trying to say? <laughs> I was like, not King Sejong. You know, the guy that created Korean language. Korean, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think this card is representing him and like just him realizing his dreams post the his him being an idol. And mm -hmm. and I feel like he's he's gonna get it. Like they they it feels like this is a good a good team together and they're gonna grow together very well. Oh, 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 love that! So cute. Oh. And how about and interesting with Kids of Life? You read earlier that mm -hmm. you know there's they're kind of still like finding themselves, right? So I don't I, I don't think this song did too well commercially. So mm -hmm. what are you seeing for them? Let me see. All right, um, the star card. So you know they they're very special girls. They they just still need a little time. It just feels like you see how she's staring up and looking at her dreams. They're still in that twinkle, twinkle, little star, I'm making a wish type uh, <laughs> energy. Like, they're still trying to figure it out. But, like, with this guy, this page of wands, as long as they continue to just keep being free, being themselves, being allowed to just grow and not be stifled, like, they, they could have a, a really good run. Sure. Um, that That's what I'm feeling. Like, they just have to find the balance within themselves really and uh yeah that gemini gemini situation they got 
gotta get those girls under control. I, I feel okay. like they they feel their energy feels a little a little crazy and uh. like a little a little wild. So as long as they can continue to find their balance and just like stay true to themselves, stay true to the dream, they'll sure. they'll get to where they're supposed to go, whatever that means. Mm. Awesome. So we have Espa who is now also going on tour. So Espa has their what sync dive tour, I'm mistaken, sync mm, live or something. Yeah. So I've seen them before at um. I've seen them before at Governor's Ball. So obviously they are the 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 the, the seasoned vets, right? And we've okay. had the reading of them like, what was their previous reading? That they were like, they're on the right path, but they're still like kind of just like they still have more to grow? Or what more was the than- reading again? I think like, you know what I forgot because it no it, it, it was it, no that was that was more kiss of life what well, I believe what life. you read for Espa was actually that they're kind they're of queens they've kind they're of found there. themselves now yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, they yeah. Found, they're in their their groove like they're mm-hmm. in where they're supposed to be and I feel like they're and the sun was shining on them which the sun is coming out for them again but it's like they're finding their spot and this it feels like they're at a new beginning this mm-hmm. um ace of swords. Is all about like new beginnings and starting, especially like up here. And I feel like their their maturity in their minds and the maturity of their spirit is sure. what the, what's going to just continue to take them upwards. You see how the stairs are going up, mm. up, up, up. Sure. They just have a they have a really good trajectory, and they can fill. They have the possibility to fill that spot that is wide open for sure. somebody to be that yeah. girl. Yeah, Blackpink yeah. is not Blackpinking right now, so. Yeah, they're that's not... interesting. Yeah, it's interesting, interesting also because SM, like as a company, is it seems to be going through some turmoil right now. But then at the yeah. same time, Espa is kind of finding their groove, so it'll be interesting yeah. to see kind of that dynamic as yeah. well. Yeah, and Espa, it's interesting for me because SM is known for vocals, and Espa is more rapper, more talk, seeing more fun, like country cat 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 cat, which like I re I really like. But I'm like, yo. I need SM to figure their lives out and get us some vocalists again because they can still home. But don't play Chin, don't play with me. Yes, I'm just naming EXO members. Taming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she said and. Yeah. <laughs> say and? some. Why? 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 But when you say bo- <laughs> a vocalist, if I'm if I'm naming a vocalist. Yeah. And his name is in Bacon. And I don't know what's about to happen to him. And I'm very scared. Mm. Oh, my God. I enjoyed yeah. that pineapple song that came out. He yeah, put out a song? Right. He did. Right, 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 right. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Okay, well, before we wrap up, Vanessa, we would love for you to pull a card on us, too. We're going to keep these readings private, but if you would like a reading, definitely go hit up Vanessa at Red Fairy DF on instagram oh my gosh this has been so much fun i've loved adding these readings and your insight yeah. into this this is so cool we have to have you on again oh my god i would love to if yes. you ever do an hype in call me that's my, oh my god noted yes noted. he loves an hype in i do that's how we met <laughs> vanessa get yeah. out yeah oh I, my god i literally fly to new york anytime in hype plays in new york i get on a plane and I go to New York and watch them because they're my fave. I love that for you. Oh my god! See, I don't have a fave group right now. I gotta like re- revamp my like love for K-pop groups. I'm like a I'm like a sidestep at this point. I'm, like, oh, I'm like ready this. to drop thousands anytime Shiny is ready to do a Shiny full is US tour. I'm only old groups, so like only the old ones. And 21. I'm it. waiting for 21. I'm waiting for 21. Okay, 21. 21. Well, 21. Yeah. yeah. If if uh, if EXO does a world tour, I'm giving my liver. Oh, girl, we need the liver. What you mean? We got to get turned. Celebration. You can give a part of your liver. Part of it. A tit. A tit, maybe, but never okay. the liver. Half a tit. Half a tit. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There you go. You and me. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> Just one tit. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Vanessa, do you want to plug yourself one more time for our listeners? Where should people find you? Okay. You can find me on Instagram at Red Fairy D, like dog, F, like fairy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's my name and if you want a reading just shoot me a dm i'm always in there checking um and we can set up an appointment and it's it's really fun like i'm not scary i'm really yeah. sweet about it and um i love doing k-pop readings like that's 
my favorite thing. I love getting into the minds of our K-pop friends. Like, if y'all gave me more time, I would have literally broken every one of these girls down. Oh, my God. Build. But we'll save that for another time. <laughs> yes. Yes. I cannot wait to see what happens in a year's time because we have set it in the in motion. We've heard the readings. We've heard the callings. And you, CCTV listeners, CCTV viewers, have also heard our ratings of all of this. You've heard the readings of all of the girls. So thank you so much, Vanessa, for joining us, of course. We are also available on all platforms, like uh, Instagram and then TikTok and all that good stuff, tip Twitter. Find us there. We get we going viral, y'all. We going viral. Yeah, Kylie um, added- Minogue just reposted one of our TikToks. Yes. Let's, Let's go! Come <laughs> on. Get with it or quit it, honey. All right, so we are at cctv pops on all social media and be sure to leave a comment and dm us and let us know what wins the pop-up for all of you guys okay and hit those follow subscribe buttons because we really have some more fun episodes and more awesome guests coming onto our show until next time that's chris that's Chantel and vanessa <laughs> yeah and we're signing off from cctv the non-stop pop show bye